Hello and welcome to Conversations with Carrie. I'm your host, Carrie Adlington, and today I'd like to share with you about how to create a compelling vision. Because compelling visions enable us to create a life that we are drawn to, that we want to live. It's like the fuel that sets us going in a direction. It allows us to focus our energy and know what's important to us and what is not. What's in alignment with what's going to get me to feeling, acting, having what I want in life, what I truly want in life, what really matters to me in life. And this is really important because at the end of the day, energy is one is one of our currencies that we spend in life. The other is that we've got energy and time. These are two things that we never get back, our energy and our time. And if we do not have a focus about how we want life to be for ourselves, we can get caught up in other people's agendas. We can get caught up in emails that really don't matter and watching a video that may not impact in our lives. Where we just go get by in life by being entertained and making do with what we've got. Versus, as um, Dr. Wayne Dyer puts it, embracing our humanity and becoming the human being we were born to become because we've all come here with a purpose. Even if we don't know what that is, and even if our first attempt at a compelling vision doesn't get us there, at least it gives us a stepping stone into tapping into the true humanity, our true beingness, the true reason that we've come here to live and explore, the lessons that we've come here to learn and break through, the contribution we've come to make to Mother Earth and the people that are around us. And there's a few reasons why people don't do a compelling vision. They don't create, they don't spend the time creating it. Pure, some people just don't see the need for it simply and they'll spend more time planning a weekend away than they will the whole life. They'll perhaps spend more time planning for a wedding than they will the marriage that they're going to have with that person thinking that the, the, the wedding is the end. But it's not. It's just the beginning. And as a result, when we don't have that compelling vision for a part of our lives, often those areas lack fulfillment. They lack a depth and richness that, that is possible. So that's one reason why, so that's another reason why it's important and also a reason why people don't do it. So some people, they might have taken the time, but they're afraid to acknowledge what they want because it makes them feel uneasy about where they're at right now. So let's give you an example. Um, that's an example that Calvin Coyles use, uses. So I think about a health and fitness goal. So, so this is just something that is completely arbitrary that's just been pulled out, fabricated. I don't know much about weight loss. Um, so let's say someone wants to lose 10 kg. And right now they're at 80 kilos, but they want to be 70 kilos. To acknowledge that what they want, they have to acknowledge what they're not. So they have to acknowledge that they're, that, that, that they're at 80 kg, which is where they don't want to be, and not at the 70 kg where they do want to be. And for many people, they just don't want to deal with that reality. And they don't want to feel accountable to that reality that they've created being something that they don't want or being at a place where they don't want. And this is totally understandable and it's totally normal to have that feeling. So I just want to speak to that and it's just really acknowledge and validate because I've been there. I know what it's like to go, well, I want my life to be different. <laughs> I want things to be 
different from what they are right now. And I want that thing, but here I am, and I don't know how to get to that thing, but I don't really want to have to think that I'm I'm not where I want to be. I'm keeping that pretty vague, I realize, but that's what's happening at the topmost layer. It doesn't matter whether it's been in health, whether it's been in professional, whether it's been in education, um, relationship, the 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 gap, it doesn't matter what the gap is, but if we don't want to acknowledge where we're at because we feel guilt around it or shame around it, that's going to be painful to, to look at that. And it's okay. And it's okay to know that wherever we are in our journeys, we can only ever start from one place, and that's from where we are right now. Like, if you wanted to go for a trip to a certain country, well, guess what? You're going to have to start that journey from where you're standing or sitting right now. You're not going to be able to do it in the middle of an airplane flight where you're not yet because you haven't booked the tickets and you haven't figured out how you're going to get to the airport yet. So it's okay to begin from where you are, even if that feels like you've gone backwards from where you've been in the past. It's okay. Start with what you've got. And it comes about, that comes with self-acceptance and acknowledgement of yourself. If, the, if you're in this position. And if you're not in, posi in this position, that's fantastic and wonderful. So the third reason or another reason, because I think I'm going to give you more than this, actually, because I've thought of some more. So another reason why people don't create a compelling vision is that they're happy with the goal. They know where they are, and they know what they want, but they feel powerless to do something about it. Like, I was giving the example before, I don't know how to lose that 10 kg, so I might as well give up now. They feel like they have to have the answers they have to have all the resources right now. But the truth of the matter is, there are resources that are internal to them and there are resources about them that can help them along the way. Like asking others, who's done this before? Is there someone in my circle, someone who I know has done this before, who is willing to give me time and energy to help me understand it and give me accountability to help me progress to where I want to be. If I don't have someone in my circle who has that knowledge and skill and is willing to ha help me, do I? can I find someone who has done it, who has the results, who, who can show me? So looking for an expert, a coach perhaps, maybe it's a book. Who can teach me? Who can show me what it is I can do? The other thing is, what resources have I got? For example, the ability to learn. Can I learn? If you ever went to school and you learn, or even if you can learn to talk, you learn to talk, right? That's a learning, that's a skill. You have to learn how to speak. If you're having to do something new for the first time and over time you get better at it, you just learned a new skill. We're often learning things all the time. Some of them may be useful, some of them may be not so useful, but believe me when I say, you have the ability to learn. And if you didn't, you wouldn't be listening to this podcast. Why would you bother? It wouldn't interest you. If you couldn't learn, you wouldn't be listening to this right now. So tap into some of the abilities that you have, like that ability to learn, the ability to use the internet. If you have the internet, which I'm guessing you do because you're listening to this podcast, that's a resource that you have. You can access the internet. You can type. You can pick up a book. You can read. So use these skills, and there'll be other ones that I haven't even mentioned or thought of at this present time. 
So know that you you can tap into resources. You don't have to have the knowing yet. And the other reason, another reason why people don't create a compelling vision is they think they have to have it all figured out in one go. And I'll speak to me on this one. I'll put my hand up to that. I feel feel like in the past I've had to have everything figured out. I've had to, I have to know where all the I's are dotted, all the T's are crossed, and I have to know exactly how it's going to be. The deal is the future is still unknown. It is unwritten. There are many, many possibilities. And I'm limited by who I am and what I know right now. But down the track, as I work towards becoming who I want to be, I learn new skills, I adapt, I get stronger in some areas of my life that I wasn't before, I have access to other resources. And so the vision will change because I'm becoming stronger and different from where I was when I created the vision. Some of the gaps that were perhaps a bit hazy start to get filled in as I meet other people and start making more connections. Perhaps you can relate. So we don't have to know exactly what it needs to be. So, and I want to give a few more. And I came across this on Scott Jeffrey's site, actually. And I thought these were really, really cool in terms of why we don't create why a lot of people don't create compelling visions and he says some of it's down to cultural conditioning too so where we've been conditioned or we've been taught to make decisions based on a limited range of options and I'll speak to this too because for me personally and again maybe you'll resonate maybe you won't but when we're young like when we're like Coming to the end of high school in the UK, it's about age 14, 15, we're, we're having to start looking at what we're going to do for the rest of our lives. Now, I don't know about you, but 50, I'm still figuring it out. <laughs> at the age of 41 now, I'm still figuring out what it is that I want. Um, so back when I was 15, and maybe you can resonate with this, I didn't have a clue. Some kids do have a clue and that's great and go them but for majority of us we don't know right and I remember there being a big file of all these career options I could choose from and even went to um forget now if it might have been like the job center and you type in a uh, you fill out this um this this form was question there and at the end it spits when you've done it it spits out some really good career options for you in theory now you see we're limited right by what some of society is a good career we're limited by what someone has put into that list into that book you see for me what i realized was that i was interested in herbs and i was interested in um, healing the body with natural things. I felt like I had this knowing that health doesn't come from a bottle, from a tablet. Well, perhaps it does in a way, but it first and foremost comes from nature, that nature provides everything for us. And what I couldn't express was that actually what I really wanted to do was herbalism. It, it intrigued me that, for instance, that we could make aspirin out of willow. And what I figured was, well, so willow is the, actually the, the healer. And when I learned that, that you take aspirin from the tree... Sorry, aspirin from the chemicals within the tree, and you're just focusing on that one thing. I was thinking, well, but doesn't the tree provide everything that you need? Wouldn't it be providing other things? Because surely we were more than just our bodies. What about the emotional and the mental and the spiritual aspects of us? So anyway, I've kind of gone off on a tangent here, but you, but do you see the limits here? So in the end. Um, I, I ended up going down the pharmaceutical route because I didn't know that 
herbalism was a thing. That wasn't in the the book that I could choose from. It wasn't something that was spat out by a machine as an option for me. Neither was a Reiki healer or sound healer or coach, funnily enough. Um, and again, I don't believe, and I could be wrong, it was a long time ago, that those were options. So we are totally taught that we're limited to a certain range of options. And so we feel like that we have to pick from a few things. And when we're creating a vision for ourselves, well, the vision is unlimited. It's infinite. There's possibilities galore. And that can make us feel a little bit uncomfortable in a way. So it can make us feel uncomfortable because there's so much choice. Like going to the supermarket and you've got five tomato ketchups to choose from or more. Which one do you pick? How do you make the right decision? How do you make the right choice when there's so much to choose from? And there can be a bit of, yeah, which one's the right thing? And there is no right. There is no, there is no right option. There's just options and it's just trying it out. And so, so that's one, one of the reasons that Scott Jeffrey shares um, as, a, as a blog to creating a vision. Another blog is actually that visualization is a skill, and I w will attest to this as well. So a visualization is where we can see, hear, touch, smell, basically using our imaginations in the way that our imagination works. And it doesn't have to be about seeing in our, in our mind's eye although it could be and it is a skill to be able to visualize clearly and the things that can hold us back from creating a visual and imagine imaginative future for ourselves is that we might worry that we're not doing it right and some people simply believe that they can't visualize or that it doesn't work for them. Now, the truth is, as in my opinion, is that many people who say this can actually visualize. I remember one lady telling me that she saw a dream, that she saw certain things. It's like, well, to me, that's visualization. She's seeing something in her mind's eye. And there are exercises that we can do to help ourselves with that visualization. And it can be anything from calling up an old memory and seeing that like it's in front of us right now, or even taking what we can see in front of us at this moment, seeing the details of it, seeing what it looks like, closing our eyes and imagining the details that we that we can see that we can actually like we're we're seeing with our, our eyes open if that makes sense what's in front of us and to begin with that's going to be tricky and hard and it's okay it's a muscle it's something that you can try out a couple of minutes a day and just see what happens And the last thing that Scott Jeff, oh no, not the last thing, <laughs> almost the last thing. So the third reason that Scott Jeffrey shares that um, we don't create compelling visions is that we are afraid. And we're afraid that we might not succeed in achieving our dreams. We might be wondering, can I achieve it? So questioning our competence, our ability to actually do the thing, to persevere through all the hardships and the challenges that will come up because there will be some. There can be uncertainty around, well, who am I to have that thing? What makes me think that I can dream that big? 
we've been taught and in England and New Zealand especially there's such a thing as tall poppy syndrome as well where if someone does really well well we've got to cut them down bring them down to our level well that sucks frankly and if that's ever happened to you I'm sorry that that's happened to you because it stops us from reaching for the stars and in living our dreams we might come up against people not liking it and having to say well cool that says more about you than it does about me and I'm going for it anyway And I love this line that, he, that Scott Jeffrey says, and he says, a vision is a roadmap to growth. A vision is a roadmap to growth. Because who we are to have the vision is not who we are right now. Otherwise, we would have the lifestyle that we're dreaming of, that we desire. We'd have the body that we want. We'd have the relationships that we want. We'd have the house that we want. We'd be living a lifestyle that rocks our world so a vision is a roadmap to growth and so we can expect there to be opportunity to grow and become stronger um and the fourth reason that Scott Jeffrey says we don't create um, compelling visions is that like I said shared before we think we have to have it right we think it has to be absolutely perfect. And the thing is, and, and for those of us who are perfectionists, I'm a recovering perfectionist, we don't get anything done. We're so busy trying to get everything right that we never feel like it's good enough to go out into the world. So imagine if we're trying to create a vision that's perfect, well, when are we ever going to get off our backsides and work towards that and create something? Because we don't know what the vision actually needs to be as such. And there's no getting it right because it's always going to be shifting because we shift and change as we grow. So there's no, it's no perfection in it. You can never get it right. So let that go. Let the need to get it perfect and right go because it's not going to serve you in moving towards who you want to be and that's ultimately what the compelling vision is it's about who you want to be and this is about and i just want to come tell you what about what the compelling vision actually is what it's really about so your compelling vision is about who you want to become. It's about what you want to experience. It's about exciting you, fulfilling you. It's a vision that's perhaps a little bit scary because it's going to make you think, oh my God, could I do that? Could I have that? At the same time, it feels possible. I, there's a possibility that I could have that. I'm not really sure how right now, but it feels possible. Maybe you've seen people who have what you want. And if someone else has had or got something similar to what you want, then it's, there's every chance that you can have that too. Your vision is something that encourages you to become a better person. It includes things that deeply matter to you. It's your guide for purposeful activity. And it's about learning about yourself and your vision may change as you understand yourself better as you change, as I've said before. And ultimately, it's your why. It's your big picture. It's your purpose. It's your fuel and drive for creating a life you want to live, we, that we want to live. It's in alignment with your personal values, your emotions and beliefs. 
that you may already be living or that you want to live more of. For example, health. Maybe you perhaps want to eat even better than you are right now. Or if you're already eating well, perhaps there's another level in improving your health. Perhaps the next level for you would be exercising. Or maybe it's upping the reps or the weight. Or increasing the resistance, in other words, so that you keep building your strength. Because if you keep it all the same, if you plateau, you're not growing, you're stagnating. It's about living out of your imagination. So living out of a place of what's possible versus what's not. It's about having a lifestyle or an aspect of your life that is enriching and allowing yourself to spend the time doing what you want. So it's not about what other people want. It's about what pleases you. And it's about creating a balance with what works for you. Some people work hard, but their work isn't work, it's play. So whilst they're working, they're playing hard. And then they have a little bit of time with their friends and family, and that's enough for them. Cool. For others, for others of us, we, we might want to have a little bit of time where we're spending time working. And then the rest of the time, we want to spend connecting with friends and family. Maybe hitting the surf or whatever. So your life balance is what works for you. And there's some specificity in this and clarity. So you don't have to be real specific. There can be openness. But at the same time, the more specific we are about something, like Cassio Banyak shares, when we're specific about an ask, because that's what we're really trying to do is fulfill our desires. And when she talks about a desire and an ask, that's getting really specific. Now, our compelling vision can have some specificity in it. And as we grow, draw closer to, the, to being able to ask for that thing or to have that thing, we can know, well, is that what I really want right now? And if it's not, we know we can grow and change the vision. which is really cool, don't you think? And another way of looking at the compelling vision is that it's a picture of what being great looks like to you. So you being great, what does that look like? And it's about having something that you must live for that if you didn't live it it wouldn't it just wouldn't be an option you wouldn't have a fulfilling life it wouldn't feel like it was a life worth living so your compelling vision must be something or have elements that must be part of your life and here's an indicator He's a great indicator. If our compelling vision isn't strong enough, isn't big enough, we can get confused by the obstacles around us. Because when we've got a big enough why, we've got a big enough compelling vision, we can take care of anyhow. So I want to give you a metaphor that was shared by Sharon Pearson, and she likened her compelling vision or why to a car. And she said, well, imagine driving along a dirt road in a car with a very low clearance. So you're like, maybe you're even in a sports car, right? So you're in something that can move quite quickly, but it doesn't have the clearance. What do you think is going to happen on a dirt road that's all bumpy, that has that's filled with potholes? You're probably going to bottom out. And you're going to be going really slowly because how can you drive fast on uneven terrain? And if it's hot, and I know gravel roads here in New Zealand, there's heaps of them and I live in a place where there's lots of them. Um, 
And if you go too fast on a gravel road, you can slide and slip. You can lose traction with the road. So if you're going to drive safely on this bumpy gravel road with potholes and bumpy surface, you're going to be taking it slow, even if you're in a race car. And you, so you're going to get frustrated by the road because you just don't have the clearance. So now let's look at if you have a big Y. If you have a big Y, you are going to have a 4x4. Four four. You are going to have big tires, lots of clearance. You're going to have the ability to get off the road if you want to. Now, do you think that in a 4x4 four four, with your high clearance, you're going to be frustrated by little bumps in the road, by every little pothole? No, I don't think so. If anything, you'll be driving over that race car that's taking it slow because of every bump. So your compelling vision wants to be like a four by four, where you can go over the obstacles with ease. You know that you can and that you must. It's going to take you, carry you over it because it's going to feel like nothing compared to not having what you want. Hope that makes sense. And hey, if it were me, I'd want a tank. <laughs> Get yourself a tank because then you can go anywhere and you can blast the obstacles out the way. So there you go. That's your aim. Aim for a compelling vision that's like a tank. Now, we've talked about why it's important to have a compelling vision, what it is. I haven't really talked about much what it isn't. So let's No, I, I, I think that actually talking about what it is. No, actually, I'm going to talk a bit about what it isn't. I wish I'd done this the other way around, but that's okay. It is what it is. So what it isn't is you winging it. So let me give you an example. Think about Alice in Wonderland. Maybe you've seen the movie, maybe you haven't. But Alice is um, a character and she's running through a maze as fast as she can and she gets to a point in the maze it looks like a dead end but then she gets to the wall and it turns out she could go left or right and she's wondering which way do I go and she holds herself back she starts procrastinating and she's worried about making the right choice and she's to her credit she decides to ask for help she sees Cheshire Cat sitting in a tree and she says to the Cheshire Cat, which way do I, which way should I go? And the Cheshire Cat says, well, where would you like to go, Alice? And Alice says, well, it doesn't very much matter. And the cat says, well, it doesn't very much matter which way you choose. And there's no wisdom in that. So, because she didn't have an idea of where she wanted to go, it doesn't matter which one she takes. But one way could lead her to a place that she really wouldn't like. Maybe, if, maybe to use an extreme, maybe one goes to hell and maybe one goes to heaven. But because she doesn't know how to ask for what she wants, she can go to hell and end up with a life she really doesn't want. Versus going a direction which to give her a lot of fulfillment and happiness and joy. So it's not about winging it, where things don't matter. It doesn't matter which way I go, I'll, I'll just take things as they come. It's about having a bit, having some intention about the direction in life that you want to take. And it's not about being busy for the sake of being busy, hoping that you'll end up where you want to, to go. It's a, again about being having proactive choice about the decisions and where you're putting your energy to go where you want to go, to have the life that you want to have. It's, and as a result of that, it's not about 
just doing stuff to the detriment of things that matter to you. So it's not like you're doing stuff so you, you feel good that you're doing it, but then if you are doing those things instead of doing the things that matter of you, or worse, that you're actually undermining yourself, you're going against your values, that's that's not going to make you feel good. That will that will actually erode your self trust, your self worth, your self esteem, because you're not living to things that really, really deep down matter to you. So you don't need to know the details. You don't need to know how it's going to manifest or how you're going to create it at this point. You just need to know right now that you want to travel to wherever it is you want to go to. Like to begin with, you might decide that you've seen pictures of Rome and you really want to go to Rome. But right now you don't know if you're going to fly there, if you're going to use boats, if you're going to go over land. You don't know any of that stuff. And that's okay. You don't need to know the details at this point. Because you're going to research it, you're going to be taking step by step on the journey. So you don't need to know all the information right now. It's not living based on past experience or memory. It's really about pulling into your consciousness the possibilities of what you could have and living in that frame of mind. What's possible? What else could this be? Versus, well, it didn't work in the past. It's never worked for me. Um, other people haven't had this. Therefore, I don't think I can. Look for, okay, the possibilities of who has done it. And if they haven't done it, do it anyway. A Chinese proverb just popped into mind, and I can't. I'm, I'm not. I'm just wondering whether I have a go at butchering it or not because I don't. It, it, it's not coming to me. I'm going to leave it. I'm not going to try. <laughs> I think I'll, I think I really will butcher it. Um, no, I'm going to leave that one alone. Oh, I'm going to try because I've mentioned it now. Um, okay, so balance. So try it. So you. It's not about when you're thinking about your life balance and how you want it to look. It's not about trying to get cram everything in to your day. It's not about trying to cram in every aspect of you, looking after physical, emotional, mental, spiritual needs necessarily, and the people around you all in one day. You don't need to do that. You can spread it out over a week, over a fortnight, over a month. What matters is that you get everything in its right to meet your needs to feel what, what feels good for you. So your compelling vision isn't fixed or rigid. As we discussed, it can grow as you grow. And it's not simply about positive thinking. So it's not like, um, it's not like, okay, I've got this vision and it's going to be beautiful and it's going to be easy and playing sailing to get there because now I have this beautiful vision. It's not that. It's not that. It's a bit of more realism in the sense that, okay, I'm calling forth this vision and now challenges are going to happen. Obstacles are going to come to, sh to test me to A, see how much I want that vision, but also to make me stronger so I can be the person, the woman who deserves to live that life. How cool is that? This is where we get stronger. So the compelling vision really is about what that quote really said earlier. Where was it? Um, the vision is of being a roadmap of growth or roadmap to growth because it's going to pull us along to be bigger, better, stronger. Okay? So how... How do you do it? How do you create a compelling vision? Well, I'm just noticing the time. I don't have time to go through a whole process in this. But what I want to do is just highlight some ways that you can look at this. And I'll share with you how you can actually access a compelling vision exercise that I've already done in our Tap Into Power membership group. And you have access to that replay. So if you would like to try this, you can. So let me just first of all share with you how to go about creating your vision. The first thing that's really important is that you want to align yourself. 
okay you want to align and ground yourself and prepare yourself for doing the work so you want to be in a state where you are open-minded because this is all about creating a discovery process so you want to be in a frame of mind that's open where you're alert you're centered and you're ready and there's a couple of ways that you can do this and actually I've invited you to do both of these things the first thing I invite you to do is actually connect with your breath and there's this beautiful exercise that Stephen Kessler shares and it's all about connecting your breath with your core so if you're on on a hard seat that's great if you're on a softer seat that's all good too I recommend sitting you can do the standing as well you could probably do it lying but I think sitting is good because you can place your feet on the floor now you want to just really connect your feet with the floor and just really feel that you have that connection with the earth and you want to move your your bum to the edge of this chair so that your hips are slightly tilted forwards and you want to sit up as straight as you can so as or as upright as you can because your back is going to curve which it's meant to do so sitting as upright as you can relaxing your shoulders back I like to roll my shoulders back a few times and allow them to rest backwards so that it feels like I'm really alert I'm really attentive and then I move my head back you can play around with this until it feels comfortable balancing on your neck so it's not too far forwards not too far back and it just feels really held and supported by the rest of your body and you may want to tuck your chin in just a little bit so that it raises the crown of your head up towards the ceiling and if you want to you could even imagine I remember doing this in yoga um, there's, a, there's a string at the top of the, your head and someone's gently tugging it upwards and just see how that feels and see how your body elongates as if someone is pulling that string at the top of your head upwards and just notice how your body feels aligned so now you should feel quite centered just by doing that and then what you can do with your breath is as you breathe in imagine that you have a column of light running from the base of your spine in fact imagine it going through your perineum and imagine that that column of light stretching all the way up through the core of your body and out of the top of your head going along that string okay and then what you want to do is as you breathe in imagine light or heat or warmth or peace whatever works for you just imagine yourself bringing up energy through the bottom of your body up to the top of your head up that column of light and then on the exhale you're imagining that you're that energy going down into the earth so you bring energy up from the earth into your body up the core up the top of your head and exhaling and this is a great time to release any tension stresses worries any busyness in the mind so letting all of that go down into the earth and letting her transform it for you and then on the in breath bringing in more peace harmony joy openness curiosity and exhaling tension stress worries doubts fears into the earth so doing that should help you to feel more centered and grounded and you want to do the breathing slowly steadily you want to not breathe in so deep and hard that it hurts it's not about being in pain or anything like that it's about being gentle with yourself but allowing that breath to be more f filling you up more than it would be for just doing a normal breath 
And then the second part is actually connecting with your heart. And, this is, and the beautiful way of doing this is actually by placing your hand on the heart. And if you feel like you need more nurturing, you could place a hand on the heart and one on the cheek. And this helps to stimulate serotonin in the brain and helps us to feel safe. And if that doesn't quite feel enough for you, you could actually try crossing your arms over and holding your arms. So if that makes sense, so like holding holding your shoulders with the opposite hand and seeing how that feels for you. So you want to feel like you're held, that you're nurtured, that you're safe. And just connecting, bring your attention into your heart space. So if you've got your hand on your heart, allowing yourself to feel your heartbeat. And breathing into this space, so breathing into your chest. And thank your heart for breathing in, noticing and acknowledging your heart, and then breathe out and saying, thank you. And doing that calmly, smoothly and quietly for about three full breaths. And feel that warmth as you connect with your heart space. And then once you're in that right frame of mind, there are several options for you in terms of discovering your life vision. So you could explore what would an ideal day look like? An ideal average day, one way perhaps you're working just a normal day in the life of you. So not a holiday, not a day where you're just drinking sangrias on the beach, but a day that fulfills you, that you'd want to live over and over again, that would never bore you. You could think about your core values, things that matter to you, things that you would stand by and you, that you value the most. And it could be things that you're living by right now, it could be things that you want to live by, but for whatever reason, circumstances in your life are meaning that you're going against it. And that could be one of the reasons that, or it could be a reason that maybe you feel a low self-esteem or uncomfortable or um, uncertain about having a compelling vision. If that's you, that's totally cool. And you can now decide, okay, if I were living the life that I really want to live, living by these values, what would that look like? You could think about what interests you. Maybe you'd like to write down five to ten things that you've enjoyed doing the most. What elevates you? What can't you live without? Or what are you living without right now that you wish you were living with? And you may know the answer to these, or you may not. You may be thinking, oh, I don't know what makes me happy. That's totally okay. Totally okay. And that's why we're going to look at um, different options for you to explore this. So um, thinking about areas of focus. So you can use something called a life wheel. And a life wheel is simply a, a circle that's divided into seven to eight categories. And then you can think about what, fulfills you in each of these areas. So here's some examples of categories that you could think about. You could think about your health, so your physical health and well-being. You can also include emotional health in this as well. And I would say mental health too, for that matter. So physical, emotional, and mental health. Relationships. And you can include your primary intimate relationships, your family and friends can think about your social life, including religious and spiritual communities and other group activities. How are your finances? Think about your ability to manage your money effectively, save, budget and invest. What would your ideal life look like financially? What would your ideal life or your compelling vision look like in terms of your profession or business? So this is all about your work. Um, what career would be really, are you doing the career right now that would 
that compels you or is it something different? Who are you working with? What kind of impact is that having in the world? So you might want to think about a category for personal growth. And if you're interested in self-actualization or simply becoming a better person, which is why you are here, then this is a really important category. So what would that look like for personal growth? What might you be doing that would be growing you as a person? Where do you see yourself at in terms of knowing who you really are? And finally, you may want to consider something along the lines of spirituality. And this is your connection with the consciousness of the world, with God, the universe, spirit, whatever word resonates with you. But that higher consciousness, that consciousness that's guiding the cells in your body to work the way that they do that positions every atom in the universe exactly where it needs to be at the right time. And actually, I'm going to give you a couple of other things that you may want to consider. So things like your creativity. What in your compelling vision do you create? Or perhaps what do you contribute? What kind of attitude do you have? What is your lifestyle? What do you do for fun? Okay, beautiful. And maybe they resonate with you, maybe they don't. So here's some other things that you can do. Um, when I was doing a course with T. Harvecker, one of the things that he had us doing was writing our own eulogy. And that was really quite confronting. But you could write your eulogy. You could, and I recommend that you do too. I recommend that you would do one as if you died tomorrow. What would people say about you? Or what could you say about you if you died tomorrow? And we are our own worst critic, right? I can say mine was pretty harsh <laughs> when I did mine for the first time. And you, then what I'd like you to do, because this is like acknowledging you for where you are right now. And I want you to, whatever you write down, validate yourself. Okay. Um, and then you want to think about, okay, well, that person's now died. Gone. That's past. And in your eulogy, acknowledge, and this is really important, acknowledge all of the times where you fought for the things that mattered to you. Acknowledge you for the strength that you had in times that were tough and challenging, that made you question whether these things really mattered to you. And you fought through and you said, yes, this matters to me. And I did this. And that shows that it really does. I'm not talk just saying it. It truly mattered to me because I took these actions. It could be anything. It could be when, you, when you've looked after somebody. It could be when you've given up a job because it, it wasn't in alignment with your values. It could be living in a cir certain circumstance, which while on one hand was meeting your values, in other ways it, it was not healthy. And knowing that you valued other aspects of you and you fought for those in that moment. So notice the times where you've lived by your values, where you've been challenged. And acknowledge that in that eulogy of where you are now, of where you've come from. And then from that point, 
what you can do is say, okay, that part of me has died, gone, has passed. Today, I am deciding that I am going to be living my best life. And I, and I want you to, you can determine a future time or not, but sometime in the future, you want to write another eulogy for yourself and what you would say about yourself what now you've made that decision to live your best and live an uncompromising life that only focuses on your values. The way you will not be swayed from the things that truly matter to you. What would that look like? And if you would like a meditation I will tell you about the one that I recently did in our Tap Into Power group. And that is based on Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. And so it was in, it was in Stephen Covey's book, um, Starting with the End in Mind, The Second Habit. And what we did was this we first of all acknowledged that we are who we are that we've done what we've done that we have fought for our values no matter how big or small they are we acknowledge those we play we allow our super conscious mind to play back all of those moments where we lived by what mattered most to us Then we acknowledge ourselves and say, okay, cool, this is, where, this is where I am right now. And I know that I've lived by my values. I know that I've done what I need to do to live by things that matter to me, no matter how big or small. And today I make the decision to live a better life, a more fulfilling life, a happier life where my connections with others are deeper, where my health is renewed and improved where I am living on purpose. And then we broadcast ourselves into the future. And I used Stephen Covey's example, so we made it three years from now. And you're at your funeral and you're listening to what four speakers and what they have to say about you. Be you being the woman or the person who has lived the way that she's wanted to live. And I trust that you can see the power of that. And we had some amazing results from doing that exercise. So if you're interested in hearing that for yourself, I'll post the, the link is carrieadlington.com four stroke membership to come and register for it. It's completely free to join for 30 days and you can have access to all of the replays that, you've, that we've done so far and you get access to four live workshops through, through the month. So you get two workshops like what I'm just sharing with you where we dive deep into um, Diving into what makes you tick and how to get you to move forward into a life that you really want to live. Because this is so important, right? We all want to live a fulfilling life. So helping you to understand yourself better, helping you to really tap into what motivates you. And so we have two sessions a month based on that and another two sessions a month where we help you as you get to know yourself deeper and you bring up more awareness about your patterns and why you do what you do and why you feel the way you do to help you release those patterns on a cellular level using sound and energy healing. And this is really powerful stuff and this really helps to accelerate the process of you becoming the woman that you are destined to be, that you were born to be. So if that resonates, do come and join us. We'd love to have you. And that URL again is carrieadlington.com 
forward stroke membership and I'll post it in the, the description below as well. So I look forward to seeing you there. So good to he have you here as always. So glad to have you stay to the end and I do look forward to connecting with you more. Have a fantastic day wherever you are in the world. Bye for now.